So, <laughs> welcome. It's terrible being first. As the CFP for this conference acknowledges, what's possible in education today is not what's happening in education today. The goal of the Department of Education's evidence framework is to bridge that disconnect. Specifically, with input from learning technology researchers and developers, we are rethinking the concept of evidence. One advantage of learning technologies is that they generate lots of data. We are asking, for what kinds of decisions can that data provide evidence? What can be meaningful in that data, first of all? We want to move the conversation around data-driven decision-making away from an overemphasis on standardized test scores to highlight decisions that can't be made based on test scores alone. For example, new value is placed on students' motivation and engagement if motivated students are shown to learn better. The makeup of middle school or high school peer networks, for instance, merits attention when shown to influence students' course-taking patterns or predict success in those courses. Considering traditional and new outcomes in combination, such as test scores alongside levels of peer attachment, underscores the relationship between educational technology and digital media and learning approaches that many of us are trying to navigate. But how do we accomplish this? Big data is a game changer in education. Never before have we had such large quantities of information at such a small bean size. We need new research methods to account for this new kind of research object and to document and account for new successes in practice. The department has a forthcoming paper on educational data mining and learning analytics, for example, based on input from researchers and industry representatives. The evidence framework is developing use cases to illustrate these and other emerging methods that people are presenting on here, including visual data analysis and interdisciplinary social network analysis. We are also seeking input to rethink possibilities for stages in education research with attention to the more nebulous middle ground between pilot and full scale, when design-based implementation research and designing for scale can both be productive approaches. Now, digital learning resources of all kinds generate more data than is useful for testing our own hypotheses in any individual study. We need structures in place to make different kinds of secondary data analysis more possible. We're exploring mechanisms for researchers and developers to do just this, because community data sets open up possibilities for a whole new level of collaborative work in education. Now, especially with Google's controversial new privacy policies starting today, we are acutely aware of the need to pursue these goals while also protecting identities and respecting IRB requirements. Now, so far I've talked just about how researchers use data, but the evidence framework is also concerned with how data can be accessed and understood by end users, whether district leaders trying to make decisions about what to purchase or implement, teachers who make implementation decisions every day, and of course, students and parents as well. You've seen softwares that help uh, teachers understand which student is having uh, trouble with a given concept. But what about diagnostic information being built into that that could show teachers not just who's having trouble, but what kind of help might help most? Evidence can help students navigate their own educational pathways. By becoming proactive in their own learning processes, they develop the habits that make them lifelong learners. We are working on a blueprint for a consumer's union type organization for learning technologies. The goal of this organization would be to provide objective, accessible guidance to general audiences by not only offering distillations of evaluations, but also a set of criteria to walk people through their decisions. Making the framework useful for its various audiences means thinking really broadly about the questions I've raised today. We can do that only with the input of digital media and learning developers, researchers, and practitioners who think deeply about these things every day. So we need to hear from you. <laughs> Hearing about your work and the emerging methods that you use will help us develop the most complete account of the field and a tech-centric vision of the way forward for our country's most urgent educational challenges. So visit our website and submit your ideas there. Follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our email list, Take a flyer, I printed them because I'm sure you threw out your printer long ago, so you can take one of mine. And thanks in advance for your thoughts. I appreciate your time.